Uh, good afternoon. We're going to start our unit on the outsiders today. I have a little PowerPoint to introduce the lesson to you. So this PowerPoint will cover, um, just introduce you to the author and kind of look at 1967 um, at a glance um, and then the objectives for the unit. So The Outsiders was written by S.E. Hinton. It was published in 1967, and she started writing it at the age of 15, and um, it was actually published when she was 17. Um, the story was inspired by a real-life event at, at Hinton's high school in uh, Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and The Outsiders is widely considered to be the first realistic young adult novel. Um, other books that she wrote, um, Rumblefish, that was then, this is now, and text and rumblefish and this uh, that was then this is now have also been made into films. So in 1967, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, this is him right here, he was our president at the time, and one of the biggest movies of the year was the Jungle Book, the Disney version. And then Pringles, they had their debut in 1967, that's the original design. And then of course the Beatles, they were a big music group back in the 60s, and the number one television show at the time was The Andy Griffith Show. So some 1960s slang for you. Um, chrome dome just means that you're, you have a bald head. Decked out, that just means you, you're, you're dressed up. Don't flip your wig is an expression, uh, just means don't be upset. Uh, a boob tube is uh, otherwise known as the television. Scratch means money. And tennis shoes are tennies. They meant tennis shoes. So the major topics or objectives of this lesson is going to be compare and contrast the, greaser, the greasers and the, uh, the sosas. The socias. What, and what does it mean? One of the questions you'll have to ask is what uh, answer is what does it mean to be a hero in Pony Boy's world? And then another question you'll have to add, uh, answer: How does Pony Boy's gang cope with the world around them? And just look as you're we continue with this unit and you continue reading um, the Outsiders. Just look to develop these topics as you go along. So the two major groups in the Outsiders, you have the Greasers right here. You'll see that they they dress up in jeans, t-shirts, and you know leather jackets is their thing. And then you have the uh, the socials. It's short for socials. Um, they're like your more um, your ritzy, you know, um, money type people. You'll see them. They're very, they're dressed very well. Um, they wear a lot of, you know, nice clothing. The guys you'll see, they'll wear, um, you know, le uh, letter jackets, you know, sports letter jackets. You see them in a lot of plaid shirts. So just um, keep in mind when you're when you're um, reading the Outsiders, these are the two groups that you'll be, you'll have to know. So here's our literary terms. Um, the two that I want you to pay close attention to is characterization and point of view. Okay. Um, characterization is um, it's the creation or the construction of a fictional character. Um, or, in other words, it's like a representation of a person in a narrative. Um, so we'll look to develop this term uh, a little bit more in the next couple of days. Um, we'll spend a whole lot of time getting to know each of the characters, particularly Pony Boy, Dairy, um, uh, I can't remember the other one's names at the moment, but We'll spend a whole lot more time with, with this term right here. And then points of uh, point of view, um, you'll need to know like how, um, what what person the novel is written in. Um, it can be first, second, or third. And then this comes to our term called the narrator. This is the person that's telling the story. And then you'll have to know um, the setting, you know, where, where does the story take place? What's the time and location? And then, of course, your climax is the peak of it all. 
And then the theme, um, you'll need to know the theme of this story or themes. There's more than one. And that's the central idea. And then, of course, um, ending the story, it's called the resolution. That's just after your climax, that's when all the action is resolved. Okay, that's it for the PowerPoint. Um, so we're going to get started right now. I have a pre-reading activity. Um, so we'll take a few minutes and let you complete this. Just want you to um, make a list of the different groups that you have, that you see or you know of in school. You don't have to name any names. So we'll just take a few minutes and let you complete this. It's just asking you what kind of um, what kind of groups you see in school, um, what you what you think is important as far as a group goes. I mean, what kind of people make up a certain group? Um, you know, what circumstances do you think groups form? That kind of stuff. Um, so take a few minutes and complete that, and hang on to those worksheets because we'll use them again in a minute. Okay, so you should be about finish, finishing up on these worksheets. So what we're going to do now is just divide up into groups. Um, we can just um, the two people in front do it the two people behind you. And we're just going to discuss um, the cultural and political differences of the outsiders. Um, you'll have uh, just, just, and you can also discuss your worksheet as well. And we'll take a few minutes and let you do that, and I'll be walking around to observe and, um, you know, push push you along if you need it, if you get stuck or you're running out of ideas. But just keep in mind that the '60s was a very changing decade. You had a lot of um, you had the civil rights movement, you had what's called the space race, and then the Cold War and the Vietnam War. So just make sure that you're discussing those. And, Um, to conclude for the day, um, your final um, project or 
assignment for this unit is going to be an essay. Um, so I have here a sheet with the topics that I want you to use for your, uh, for your essay. You only need to pick one, but make sure it comes from this list. Then I also have just some tips and a guide to help you with formatting your essay. We use um, what's called MLA format. And I have some general rules that you'll need to follow as far as font and font size and spacing your paper. You'll see under um, title page and headings, I don't I don't want you to use a title page for this one because usually in MLA format you don't have a separate page. Um, so you'll see like up at the top, um, you'll just on the top uh, left hand side you'll just write your name, my name, um, the class, the class name, and the due date. And then the, make sure you put the title of your essay, it'll be in the center right there. And then you'll also have to number your pages. Just um, if you go into Word under insert and then page numbers, top of page, and plain number three, and make sure that your page number is also in Times New Roman font. And I also have some um, how to do in-text citations. If you have you know one author or more than one, or if there's no author or no page number, and then your works cited page is very important. Um, this is where you're going to use, where you're going to list all your references that you used. Um, for this paper, I mean, I don't necessarily require you to have secondary sources. Um, using just the book is fine. And then I have some tips on how to um, reference um, newspaper article, journal article, web article, um, and then also how to cite your book. Um, so make sure you look at that because um, formatting formatting and structure and everything will be part of your grade. Okay. Our essay won't be due for another week or so, but just go ahead and you know start brainstorming now. Um, doesn't seem like it's a big assignment, but it can take up a lot of your time. All right, and um, I will see you all tomorrow.